You want to know things, Mr. Mason. You want to prove things. What comfort has that ever given you? I don't know that a ton of people under, uh, let's say 40, <laughs> really know about the original Perry Mason. Um, what did you like about his portrayal of the role? And and uh, is there anything at all that you took <laughs> into your new Perry, into new Perry Mason? I took the name. I thought uh, that'd be interesting to have the same name, first name, first last name, and same job title eventually. Um, I would agree about the 40. I think that's, uh, to me, in my experience, that's where the cutoff comes in where people kind of go at 40 up. They kind of, 40 up to kind of like 50, they go, oh yeah, Perry Mason. Yeah, my dad, my mum, my gran, my grandpa used to watch that. 50 plus, you start getting the kind of, oh yeah, I used to watch that with my grandpa. Like, 60 up, then they're like, oh, that was a great show. You're, you're no patch on Raymond Burr. I was very aware that this icon, this iconic character, this iconic show that was, that was enormous. But I was, I was also buoyed by the fact that this was going to be a very different, a very new, a reimagined Perry Mason. There, there was no, going to be no kind of um, placid uh, attempt at a remake. This was a reimagining. They, I think they were they were shrewd in in making it, you know, we have one case that spans the eight episodes, which really allows uh, all these incredible characters to, to evolve and develop and f for you as an audience to to follow. And I'm glad I didn't have to solve something um, every week, otherwise it'd be exhausting. The devil put Charlie Dodson in this box. Mr. Mason, it's hard to believe that you're the right person for the job. I'm the only person for this job. Tatiana, your character, Sister Alice, is supposedly this like radiant vessel for God's word, even through her hair, which is just radiant. But she's also the head of this like fairly shady church, but she seems to sort of be like the only good person in this church, maybe. Why do you think she's so trusting maybe of everyone around her? Or why is she playing ball? I feel like she's grown up in that system, that she was she's a product of it, as well as she's um, the being the, the sort of face of it has a lot to uphold and probably a, a, has been curated to a, a great extent. I also think that it started for her as um, a real thing that had value and had and was a coping mechanism and was her drive, like her, her soul's purpose. Um, and I think as we see her at the beginning, she's sort of um, rocked by this case with um, Gail Rankin's character, Emily. She's rocked by the tragedy of it and by the injustice of it and by the, uh, by all of it. And I think starts to question what she can do how she can help all of that in a real way, as opposed to in this way that sort of seems kind of out here. Um, so there's there's a reckoning with what's true for her. She's a young woman in, in a system that uh, is run by a bunch of men. Blessed be the men who will gather evidence against the devil. Blessed be the man who will snap this devil's neck. Do you guys like to watch tough stories and tough times or like what soothes you entertainment wise? When COVID was first kicking off, I struggled to watch anything. My brain couldn't focus on anything. I couldn't read a book. I just couldn't. I don't know. There was so much change happening. The one thing that I did find really comforting was this cartoon called The Midnight Gospel, which is like um, a podcast that muses on... Um, life, death, uh, presence, consciousness, all of it, and does it in this really funny way and, and with like really absurd animation. And for some reason that kinetic sort of animation with these talks, with talk of life and death and all of that felt so kind of, felt exactly like what, what I, I needed at the time. Uh, and now, now I, I'm not, I'm not watching anything except what's happening. I, I'm not totally uh, es escaping uh, into something else, but but I do know that uh, you know that is the purpose of television is also to tell stories that we need to hear and to to um, highlight voices that are are important. Um, but yeah, personally, my my brains are a bit scrambled. And Matthew, I read. Was it the cut? There was a piece where with where you sort of said that you you like watching all sorts of different stuff. Yes, I do. However, during during this time, more 
more so dictated by family politics and the age ranges we're trying to appeal to. The only thing we found uh, common ground is the nature programs. So, and I actually do find those quite calming. Um, so we've been watching a lot of those as, as, a, as a family, a lot of David Attenborough stuff, which has helped. Matthew, do you think you could be a lawyer? Not, so, what kind of not for the tea in China, not at <laughs> all. Um, no, uh, nor could I be a private investigator or a spy. Every time I play a part that I think I could do, I'm usually um, saddened in the reality of when I'm actually playing those people. I go, oh, there's not a chance I could think this quickly, this or speak this articulately to save someone's life. The way I see it... There's what's legal, and there's what's right. Um.